everybody. Welcome to this edition of Lunch with Alumni. Um, super excited to have Colleen Dockerty Treasenberg on with us today, class of 2007. When Colleen was at Country Day, she was an amazing soccer player and student. Um, and then she went to Loyola, Chicago for college. And now Colleen is back living in Michigan and she is also on our alumni council. But I'm really excited because Colleen is going to talk to us about um, the organization that she works for called North Star Reach, um, and they are affiliated with the University of Michigan. So Colleen, welcome. Thanks for being on. Yes, thank you, Amy, for having me today. Of course, it's yeah. To be here. Yes, for sure. Um, okay, so before we get into like everything that you're doing, can you just kind of bring us into who you were in the upper school like tell us about what activities you were involved in um maybe like some of the clubs you participated in where you liked to hang out in the building just like kind of give us an overview oh my gosh i know it's like blast from the past just thinking yeah. about it <laughs> uh, so actually i transferred my sophomore year so okay. i was going to know by public schools and just being in that atmosphere it is like a mega school like mm -hmm. thousands of kids and I really felt, I remember coming home after maybe a couple of days of going to high school my freshman year. And I was telling my parents, gosh, like I have great friends here, but I just don't feel like I'm finding my voice. Like mm -hmm. I feel kind of one of many. And so throughout the year, I just had this kind of pull up, gosh, I, I wonder what it would like to be to go to a smaller high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, coincidentally enough, um, playing, I played soccer growing up and a couple of my teammates went to country day. Okay. And so they said, Hey, come take a tour, see what you like. And so it kind of, I guess, snowballed from there. And I ended up transferring my, uh, my sophomore year. And I honestly feel that is where I really truly found my voice. Okay. Um, oh, cool. Soccer. Yeah, I played uh, varsity soccer and volleyball. I was on student council. Um, I gave our commencement speech our senior year. So I really think I, I my confidence as a person really took off after transferring from up uh, to Novi to Detroit Country Day. Wow, I, that is so interesting. I love that you said that. I actually think I I maybe chatted with you about this before, but I just think it's so interesting. I mean, I'm sure you were very successful in the Novi public schools, but like when you came here, it was smaller and you could just kind of like be you and like get involved in things that interested you. And I just think that's great. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it kind of really ties in and I know we'll touch on it later, but kind of ties into even what I do now in terms of just helping young kids find their voice and finding their confidence and, and really becoming the person that they're meant to be. So I know uh, I owe Country Day a lot of gratitude of where I am today. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So you, you've done a lot of things since you graduated from DCD, but talk to us about why you wanted to join the Alumni Association. So for those of you who don't know, the Alumni Association is um, essentially like a board um, of alumni who want to be involved with the school. And we have about 55 people and Colleen is on it this year. So Colleen, just tell us like what interested you about joining and what you've, what you've liked so far about it. Yeah, absolutely. So the past couple of years, I continue to find myself taking like random trips to country day, like taking in a soccer game or showing my husband around. And mm -hmm. I found that high school was such a defining couple years for me, the three years I was there. And so living in Michigan and being able to be part of the community again was an exciting feature to me. So I remember receiving an email from you actually mm -hmm. a couple months ago saying, hey, if you're interested in joining the alumni board, you know, please apply. And so for me, I just really sat back and thought, you know, Country Day gave me so much of where I am right now. And I love telling my story to others. So what a great and better, what a better opportunity to be a part of something so special and to meet other uh, people from different graduating years and reconnecting with my mm -hmm. 07 classmates. Yeah, that's cool. What committees are you on? Yeah, so I am on a, the, uh, uh, so we actually just sent out an email, um, but oh, it's okay. all about the um, gear that we'll be selling, our, our, the spirit shop. That's so right. uh, different ways to, um, I don't know, different little knickknacks that yeah. to, to everybody, whether it's t-shirts, hats, uh, we talked about different type of golf apparel for those okay. golfers out there. Uh, so really excited to just kind of get the brand out there, especially it's kind of what I do for my full-time job. So I'm just mm -hmm. applying my knowledge of what I do year round to a committee that is uh, for the better betterment of country day. 
Awesome. I love it. Okay. So let's get into um, what we're here to really get into, but um, tell us about what you do now, Colleen, your current role, like how you got this job and, and why it's why working for North Star Reach is important to you. Yes. So as you mentioned before, it is affiliated with University, University of Michigan Health System. So we're North Star Reach. We're an independent organization among different types of camps uh, across the whole, uh, we are actually internationally and domestically oh. known, okay. um, but we offer year round programming with kids with serious medical challenges, as well as offering support groups for their parents and guardians. And so it could range from a kid having epilepsy, having cardiovascular defects. Um, we offer teen week for those just trying to simply transition from, okay, I've had the support of my parents and now I'm thinking about going to college and I'm dealing with uh, sickle cell disease or maybe wow. they had a transplant. So a lot of significant parts uh, that played in their life where they spent more time most likely in the hospital than just at their own home. Um, and then we also found a lot where we were getting feedback through the community that these parents felt very isolated. Their mm. kid just got diagnosed with a very serious condition and they felt like they couldn't connect with anybody yeah. or have that same support system. And so we create opportunities for our parents to also connect and have like that inner, like that inner community as well to help them through transitions. And so um, I am the camp program director. Oh, so awesome. I facilitate all these different experiences year round okay. conferences, um, our summer programming, fall and spring family camps where the entire family, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandpa, grandma, uh, siblings can attend our camp right in Pinckney. Mm -hmm. um, and these okay. are brand new buildings. We call it rustic modern because you yeah. walk in and you're like, oh, this feels very campy, but also everything's accessible, air conditioned. Cool. Okay. Everything. Yeah. So we have it all there, but um, uh, of course uh, the virtual world has taken over due to COVID. So we also offer a lot of Zoom programming conferences oh, cool. and okay. like that. Okay. So in terms of being associated with U of M, like how does that how does that work? Does Michigan provide funding? Are all, most of the campers um, th going through the University of Michigan Health System? Is that like kind of how you get involved with it? That's actually a great question. So they are just a sliver of the hospital partnerships. So okay. we are partnered with, I think it's seven or eight um, different Midwest hospitals. Helen okay. Bob up in Grand Rapids, Cleveland Clinic, a couple in Chicago. Wow. So we actually draw patients from all different partnered hospitals. We just happen to have our, basically our CEO, our former CEO um, was a nurse at U of M hospital. And so he um, worked in the transplant clinic and stuff. And um, he was uh, taking these kids from the transplant center and saying, hey, like we're offering camp, et cetera. And then this idea kind of went off and he's like, wait, we could do this on a larger scale. Yeah. And so our property was out in Pinckney was actually going to be apartment complexes. And it used to be, um, oh gosh, what's the name of it? Camp Air, Fresh Air or something back in the day. So it was an old, actually old building. Okay. It was camp and a company was going to buy it out, but we went and U of M owned the property. Oh, perfect. And we went to them we're like, look, we got this idea. So we leased the property for a dollar a year. And we have a endless, basically lifetime commitment with them, something like that, um, where we just pay them the $1, but our whole thing is we will continue to operate there and offer these programmings for kids. That's so cool. I love that. That's really interesting. So how does um, a family find out about, about this opportunity for their child? So we are a nonprofit, so a lot of word of mouth, but as well as we um, have something called uh, family outreach. And so we have a, so we have different, uh, we have a mm -hmm. medical department. I'm the program, we have family outreach. And so okay. uh, one of my coworkers goes to these hospitals and does outreach programming, talking wow. about camp, okay. showing kids what camp can be and saying, hey, you know, if you're, if you're feeling good, you know, if you're healthy, because it's a whole application process and these kids come, come to camp for free. They don't okay. pay it down. Yeah. And so we do a lot of marketing techniques. We have a huge social media, uh, which I'm, I'm a part of, um, social, okay. social media campaign. We do, we try to get into the community. Um, so we are only five years young, which is, you know, okay. 
little baby compared to a lot of other yeah. kids that went around. So we're still really getting going, but um, okay. yeah, just a lot of marketing techniques and just connecting and uh, social networking. Cool. So how long have you worked there for? Four years. So you basically have been there for the entire time that they've been around with the exception yeah. of one year. Yeah, I came in uh, 2017 to 18. And yeah, so I've only, I only missed, I think it was, yeah, just like the first for either one or two of the first camp sessions, but I've been, yeah, I've been rolling. I love it. And I'm so cool. to do the, uh, wear different hats in the organization. Yeah. So it's, it's, I don't see myself going anywhere just because what we do and the outcomes and the smile mm -hmm. and spaces and parents gratitude. It just, that's it really awesome. That's yeah. really cool. So do kids go to camp only in the summer or is there like programming during winter break or spring break? How does that work? Sure. Great question. So we offer medical specific camps in the summer. So we, we, when we weren't in person because the past two summers, because of COVID right. we did virtual sessions. Um, but during, when we are in person, we offer six. So we have a uh, transplant, we have cardio, what we call it heart week. That's if they have any sort of, uh, they had open heart surgery or oh, wow. heart transplant. Yeah. Uh, we offer epilepsy or seizure disorder, disorder camp. Okay. Uh, sickle cell, a sibling week, which I very much love. I love that. Yeah. And then that gives the sibling an opportunity to be the one kind of like in the spotlight for the week. Um, but That's so special. Also, yeah. It's very special. And actually I could relate my sister uh, growing up. She always went to a uh, camp specifically for diabetes and I saw the transformation among her and I'm like, gosh, I wish I had the same opportunity, right? Yeah. Like, experience that. And I was too busy with soccer. So I never yeah. got the opportunity. But yeah. It was very special to see what my sister went through. And that kind of gravitated me towards the bigger picture of working for North Star Reach as well. That's so cool. So tell us about this 5K that's coming up. It's in October, right? October 2nd? Yes, it is our, it's so exciting because it okay. is our very first in person event now since COVID. Now we are following, we're, we're saying that is not, we're not following camp COVID guidelines because if we were following camp COVID guidelines, um, we probably would be having the event. So we're following okay. the state of Michigan COVID guidelines. So we're like okay. making sure our campers know that. So if they have any immune mm -hmm. uh, issues going on, we wouldn't want them to come or hate, like, just so you know, you might want to social distance, whatever that yes. may be. That's good. Um, but we are offering this 5k. I'm the race director and it was mm -hmm. an idea I had a couple years ago and we finally had a coworker, one of my supervisors come in and was like, Hey, I, you know, what about this 5k, you know? And mm -hmm. I was like, yes, because one, it gets people at our camp and two, it, it just right. allows us to grow the story more of people physically seeing, Oh my gosh, there's the big, we call uh, our medical center, the observatory, and there's the big dining hall and the camp right. village. And I think being at camp is so special. Um, so it's on Saturday, October 2nd, okay. and it's a run walk, but goes through our entire course of our camp. And you're able to see our back trails, our lakefront, our archery, um, our pool, our, our cabins, whatever that may be. But, um, it is our first time ever doing this. And I am geeked. I really am. It's called the, our North Star Reach Interstellar 5k trail run. And so walk. cool. Okay. So how can people get involved if they want to support? Mm-hmm. So actually we have a couple, uh, three different methods. Okay. One, obviously you can run walk. So if you're one of those people that are like, Hey, I would rather participate and run or walk this. Then we do have a, uh, a link that you can sign up and register as either an individual or a team, okay. um, it's, uh, a fundraiser. So you can create a team and raise money. So everything goes directly back into our programming mm -hmm. and supporting our kids and parents. Um, you could also volunteer uh, since uh, we are a nonprofit and we had a cut back significantly on our full time staff. Yeah, we are looking for 25 to 30 volunteers to staff this event. Um, plus, our full time staff is working endlessly on this. Mm -hmm. um, so you can volunteer and we have a sign up on that. And it's another great opportunity if you like working hands on and just seeing the place and meeting some of our campers mm -hmm. is a good opportunity. 
And then we also have sponsors, um, sponsorships. Uh, it could be anything from a small donation to, hey, here's you know 100 bucks for supplies, or here's a case of water, or a box of chewy bars, or whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. um, so we have different opportunities just to give back to camp, saying, hey, I think this is a great mission. I can't be there the day of, but you know, let me know what you can, what we can do to provide. That's awesome. So if people want to check this out, can they just visit the North Star Reach website? Absolutely. Yep. So simple enough, it's northstarreach.org. And okay. there will be a link that will direct you to our sign up page. Um, my email is listed on there. So if there's any questions, you can email me directly. Uh, but everything is uh, there for, for the public to look at and to just see if they're interested. Awesome. Colleen, thank you so much. This was so fun. Um, loved chatting with you. And I really appreciate you like sharing everything about your organization. It sounds so amazing. Um, and I just really appreciate like learning more about you. So thank you so much. Thanks, Annie. I really appreciate it. Of course. You. Yay. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good.